biggest crowd you ever played in front of? I think it was 1956. That's when they broke the gates down and they all went around the boundary line and because all the um, supporters of, of, of both sides, Melbourne and Collingwood, are inside the boundary line on the ground. Because you had to pull up, other than you got tear straight through them. But that was probably the biggest crowd. I think it was about, they estimated about 120,000. Um, 120,000. Where was that? MCG. Versus Melbourne? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and then four grand finals in front of an average of 100,000 people. Uh, the biggest crowd was uh, a record that won't be beaten ever. 1970 grand final, 121,000, Collingwood Carlton, with 44 points in front at half time and were beaten. But, uh, well, you can't have 121 now, it's only 100. But that was a big thrill, except the fact we lost the game. Yeah, probably. I guess mid mid nineties, probably probably an Anzac Day or even a Carlton Collingwood. The grand finals would have got a few there as well. So I always remember a home and away game against St Kilda. I think they pulled in about ninety two thousand or something. So oh, I couldn't say exactly, but we had some mammoth games against Carlton as the boys did last week. Um, Essendon, we had big games against them. So I don't know what the crowd was, but we definitely had crowds over the 90s, the high 90s at some stages. So uh, There's a lot of rivalries in football. We've got the uh, the Anzac Day match coming up. What was the rivalry like between Collingwood and Essendon back then, or what other rivalries did you have? Well, there was always a strong rivalry. Essendon was such a strong club. And I grew up a mad Essendon supporter, so... It was funny playing against this. Every time I played Essendon, I felt a bit funny, particularly when I first started playing against my heroes. And uh, one of them, a bloke called Bluey Shelton, was tough as nails and uh, uh, tried to run through me a few times. But Matty Lloyd, did you ever touch him up a little bit? Um, a couple of times. He touched me up a couple of times too, so we won't mention those. But oh, the, the Essendon-Collingwood rivalry was strong. They were a good team back those days. They won premierships. The Collingwood-Melbourne rivalry was probably bigger because we blocked them from winning their four consecutive premierships. Oh, it was an amazing rivalry. Um, I started back in 84 with the Pies and um, at that stage Essendon were the benchmark of the competition so it was just something that you look forward to so much, playing against the best and they had the best Ruckman. So uh, just to actually be able to play against a guy like Simon Madden for me as a learning experience was quite amazing. Again, Tuddy came down the forward line at one stage. I said, you put a bloke on me who can't play. He said, you go near the ball, I'm going to knock you right out. So every time he came down the for our forward line, their back line, I, I led very, very wide to keep <laughs> away from Tuddy. I knew what he was like. Um, who do you look forward to catching up with on a day like today? Oh, all the guys that you played with, um, we try and um, have a couple of get-togethers, the guy that the guys that played through our era. Um, but so it's good to catch up with them as well as you know guys that played before you and after you sort of thing. So Tuddy is always good, and Richardson boys, and all the uh, and all the '58 boys that I was fortunate enough to play in that premiership team. Always good to catch up with those guys, Delaney and uh, Harry Sullivan and Brian Beers and. Uh, and even the, the guys from the era before. I love meeting the guys from the 50s, you know, the, the era before I got to Collingwood. I, they were a great bunch of guys and uh, terrific. It's just, it's just a terrific days at Collingwood. It's really good to catch up with the guys who might have only played two or three games or never actually got a senior game. Um, but uh, I'm sitting at a table with Cameron Doyle and he's a larger-than-life personality and I think he played three games for the club. But my memory of that guy for four or five years was um, just such a big personality around the club. So it's not necessarily the champions that you want to catch up with. It's just the blokes, you know, moved on to other things. And that's what I love about it, yeah. Do you get involved with the club much these days? Yeah, Do you get I, the games? yes I chair a couple of subcommittees for them, the life members and special services I, and I chair the Hall of Fame inductee subcommittee for them. And um, so I'm in merchandise operations so sort of more the back end of the, the merchandise and things like that. So I'm lucky enough to be a life member of the club so um, I, I do have two seats at every game. Well I'm very fortunate to be a life member in the Collingwood Hall of Fame so I get invited to everything and uh, I was fortunate enough 
to present the Premiership Cup a couple of years ago and uh, that was the thrill of a lifetime to be out in that ground presenting that cup.